Greetings Augies worldwide and welcome to another episode of Ham Radio Answers. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and this is Ham Radio Answers episode 195. Now, today I'm going to provide you with a promised video uh, about using APRS with this radio, which is the Anytone D878UV. Now, since I last made a video about it, the firmware has rolled from version 1.09 to version 1.10. That also means that if you update the firmware, you need to update the software for the radio that you use on your PC to program it um, from uh, version 1.09 to 1.10. Now, the best source that I found for software, firmware, things like that for this particular radio is um, going to PowerWorks, the PowerWorks website, P-O-W-E-R, W-E-R-X, PowerWorks.com, and going to help, and then as you hover over the, I'm sorry, hover over the support button, you'll see their software downloads, and you can go find it in there, both the um, uh, firmware and the uh, software update. And they both work fine. Um, I'm using a new computer. I got myself a Hewlett Packard gaming laptop uh, with the hope that it would be a nice fast machine for doing video, seems to be so far. Uh, this is the first time I've had a computer where there's 250 gigabytes, I'm sorry, 128 gigabytes of flash memory which is very 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 fast and that's my C drive and I put the programs and stuff on there and then my D drive is just a standard old run-of-the-mill one terabyte uh, drive for everything else and so the machine starts very quickly and shuts down very quickly and uh, really hops to it when it's uh, performing uh, a program work such as uh, video editing so um, what I want to talk about today is using this radio for APRS. Now there are two ways you can do that and you have a choice of either or and of course you can switch back and forth between them at any given time uh, but you can do it either uh, through the DMR side or just the standard old run-of-the-mill analog on 144.39 uh, megahertz. I'm going to concentrate on the digital. I have never done DMR APRS before, so this was my first attempt at doing it. Now I have two uh, DMR uh, systems I can work with. One is my hotspot right there, my little uh, open spot hotspot which I have set up on a simplex channel and the DMR works through that. What I did not know and found out was that the hotspot also sends its own APRS signal out. In this case it's a beacon. It was just sending out the center of DM68CG. I went in and corrected it so that it's at the right coordinates. Um, but the other method I used is that there is a DMR repeater about 80 miles north of here and I have a 10 element 70 centimeter beam pointed at that and I was able to get it to work very well with that. And uh, of course uh, I just want to show you a little bit here kind of about how APRS works. APRS officially stands for the Automatic Packet reporting system. It was developed by a ham back in the 80s and 90s um, and has changed names. It used to be the automatic position reporting systems, now the automatic packet reporting system. Um, APRS does a lot of things. It does a lot more than just position reporting. Uh, you can actually send messages between two APRS stations. You can send weather information. You can receive information from other stations with their GPS coordinates and so on. But let me show you kind of the basic here. We start in the middle here with a GPS receiver, which in this case is embedded 
inside the Anytone. Now, it's not going to use the main antenna here. You're probably going to have to put the radio very near a window. It works here where I'm about two feet away from the window. And, uh, or outside. Okay. Uh, there's a little um, icon at the top. Let's see if I can get this to focus. There we go. Okay, that little icon right there, that thing, when that is red, you've got lock. See, it's not red right now because I'm more than a couple feet from the, the window. But when it's red, which it is right now, okay, it's actually outputting uh, GPS uh, information. And there, I just, uh, by touching the push to talk, I got it to send an out of cycle uh, APRS position report. Um, so you've got a radio transmitter here, uh, your handheld or whatever, a GPS receiver, and if the GPS receiver is sending its coordinates out through the radio, um, you're what's known as a tracker station, and which is really a bad misnomer because you're not tracking anything, you're being tracked. Um, now, your data goes out, it can be picked up by other handhelds, it can be picked up by a repeater gateway and sent to the internet. This repeater can send things out which are picked up by other radios. This is the digipeating part of it. And radios can pick it up from other radios. So the information is like in a sort of a mesh uh, kind of a network. Um, now, the repeater picks it up and it comes down here to the internet okay and there is this is one of several sites but kind of the traditional one for APRS information is APRS.FI I believe that's Finland but I, I don't know where the the uh, station actually or the uh, internet site actually is but the point of this is that position data can be shared amongst a whole bunch of people here. Now, I have in the past, and I think I have videos of this, uh, have used the messaging capability. You can send email with simple email, simple short text emails uh, with APRS. You can do all kinds of things. You can send and receive messages and so on. But the thing that it's primarily used for is position reporting. Now this is a picture of um, Phoenix. Okay, Phoenix. Phoenix, Arizona. And each one of these little tiny dots here is an APRS station. You'll see that a lot of them say WX, that's for weather. Uh, these people have little weather stations at home, like I do and they have connected them so that they report through the APRS network. There's a way of distributing your weather information so that it goes to uh, APRS. And what's interesting is you can look wherever you might be going, click on one, and you will see the readout of what the uh, station is looking at. It's pretty cool. Now let's take a look here at um, southwestern Colorado. That's me right there. Okay, uh, this is Grand Junction. Uh, Durango's down about here. This is the Utah border right here. So this is a significant chunk of um, the western central part of Colorado and each one of these is a station. Now, this is a very sparsely populated area, so there aren't very many, uh, isn't very much infrastructure, but everywhere you see an S here, there is a repeater, and these I things are internet gateways, okay, so that the information can get there. Now, you can see on here some uh, mobile, uh, these are trackers, they're mobile, and they're not only transmitting their position, but also their speed and heading. Now, I warn you, <laughs> aside, that I have observed people speeding on this chart. 
uh, or on this page uh, because I know what the speed limits are on all these back roads and I see people exceeding them quite a bit. I would really think that if you plan on speeding at least turn off your APRS because otherwise there's a permanent public record of you doing so. Now in addition you can for your station or for that matter any other station get the raw packet data. This is actually what's sent out. There's a date, a time, a station, a path, all of these are DMR. Um, other things which station forwarded it, uh, the time, the location, and you have uh, in addition to that a speed and heading. Now what's nice about this is if you for example, and I've done a lot of this uh, in the past when I had my uh, dirt bike, the motorcycle, I would uh, go on trips in the wilderness on trails and uh, back roads and uh, this Colorado's got quite a few very nice single track trails for motorcycles, horses, hikers, things like that. And then when I come home, I just download this. And I use, uh, we'll just convert it into, I think it's a GPZ file that uh, can be read by um, GPS software. And you can create maps, very nice maps of where you've been and so forth. Now, this particular chart this just is zooming in on my station um, and it tells you when the uh, packet was received uh, 27th was yesterday uh, 1532 that happens to be mountain daylight time in this case it's the way it's set up and then any text that I wanted to send I just put my name in there and uh, it shows where it is there was anyway when I uh, took this uh, particular picture of it okay this was using the open spot hotspot okay I says well that's fine it's sitting like right here I'm touching it um, what about using a real repeater okay now the repeater is in Grand Junction about 80 miles away from here it's up on the top of Grand Mesa sort of on the Grand Junction side it's W0BX, it's on 70 centimeters. Now, here is the thing. Analog APRS has to go on 144.39 megahertz. Okay, everybody's on that frequency right there. But, if you are on a DMR repeater, you are in essence, when you do APRS, sending a text message. Okay to the DMR Brandmeister system, okay, and that will is acceptable from them on all DMR repeaters. So you can go in on pretty much any DMR repeater, send your APRS message, text message, and it'll get to the right place and it'll get back around to this uh, this mapping that place right here. So that's the difference. A uh, analog only one frequency. Uh, DMR any DMR repeater can act as a conduit for your APRS information, which is kind of cool. And I think uh, I showed it to you here. This is uh, um, I'm sending uh, here a uh, uh, call land. And oh, it's been, it hasn't been enough minutes since I, there it is, sending the Digi APRS data. So it goes out at an interval that I've got in set up in there. They recommend 10 minutes or more. Okay. Now, if you're trying to be tracked through some difficult turns and so on, that's a little bit long, so you can change the interval. Um, but um, also this is set up so that every time I let go of the push to talk button it will send the APRS data too. But it is very polite. It waits for a clear channel before it sends it. Now, how do you do this? Okay, I mentioned that you've got to go get the version 1.10 uh, D878 UV 
software. Don't get the 868, that won't do you any good. You need the 878 software. And like I said, it's on the PowerWorks uh, website. So when you're in there, you're looking at the screen that you've seen before. In the last video that I did on the 878, I talked about how to set all this up and where to get it. You do need to update the software, but you're going to need to go into Tools. Okay, come down here to Options, which will bring up this little screen called Annex Function Setting. I'm sure to somebody who thought of this in Chinese, that translation made all the sense in the world. Um, but it's, it's some special options. There are only four options, GPS, Bluetooth, 500 hour record, and APRS. The D878UVs that are being sold in the US have GPS and APRS installed. Bluetooth has not come out yet. That will be an extra. And the 500-hour recording is not out. Um, but it'll record five hours. If you want to record your conversations, the radio will do it. It's a pretty sophisticated radio. When you click this APRS and click OK, what you get is an additional menu item on the main software page. APRS. Okay. Now, this gets a little kind of recursive sort of thing here. Okay, uh, this is what comes up when you um, do that. You get an APRS window here. This part up here applies to all your APRS activity. This part applies to digital APRS. This part applies to analog APRS. Okay, now you will note that sometimes when you click on something in the software, you'll get a little bit of help down at the bottom of the screen. Uh, not always, I haven't gotten it um, consistently but I have gotten it enough that uh, it's been really helpful. Now I'm going to go through each one of these here. Okay, so there's three parts. This part applies to both analog and digital. This is digital, this is analog. Let's look at the part that applies to both. Okay, so what we've got here in the APRS screen, um, there's two intervals here. The 90, this, these are in seconds. When you press push to talk, when it's pressed to release, a report will be sent if it has been more than 90 seconds since the last one was sent. Okay. Now, the automatic thing right here, the auto sends the APRS packet out at this interval. Now 120 seconds is only two minutes. I used this for testing. Really you want it more like 10 minutes. So that'd be about 1200 seconds. Okay. Now the roaming we're not going to talk about here. Fixed location beacon. If you're using this as a base station um, and you know your latitude and longitude you can put it in here in decimal degrees. So 34.21217 is the default that is in there. That is not mine. Um, and a longitude there that you can put in. And then when it sends an APRS packet, it'll send this. They call that a fixed beacon location. Otherwise, you'll be working off the GPS. Notice I have the fixed beacon turned off. So let's look at the analog part. Now in the USA, the analog frequency is 144.39 megahertz. It's the same in a few other countries, but lots of different countries have different APRS frequencies. So go to Wikipedia or something like that and find the one for your frequency, or your National Radio Society will certainly know what that is for your area. 
Now, as you may know from APRS, there might be multiple trackers that you have. So you put what's called an SSID, a <laughs> super secret identifier. I actually don't know what that stands for. Uh, I'm sure someone will tell me in a comment, and I appreciate that. You put your call sign in there, because we need that. And then your SSID, in this case 5, which is what I've always used for analog APRS. I'm KE0OG-5. That's what I used on the motorcycle. Okay. The APRS symbol table, leave that alone. APRS map icon, leave the ampersand alone. You will have to change this because it's uh, not something you can use in the uh, default programming. I use wide 2-2 and notice there's no space in there. Now if you do have another routing, if you have a second routing, you put that other routing right after that with no space or comma in between. But now down here you can put sending text, you can put any text you want there. I've just got Dave D878UV. Now that's for the analog. The analog uh, will send out text. It can actually send out quite a bit of text. Okay, you have to tell the radio the transmission frequency because when it sends an analog APRS update, it's going to send it on that frequency. Transmit delay and uh, pre wave time can both be 600. Uh, you don't need a sub op, uh, a sub audible tone, so you can leave that off. And the transmit power that you want for uh, that particular um, transmission, the analog transmission medium. Note that there are four power levels. There's low, medium, high, and turbo. Okay, um, that's turbo's not huge it's less than 10 watts uh, that's okay low is one watt I use low with the hot spot here because that's as low as it'll go I wish it were a milliwatt that'd be a lot better I wouldn't be sending outside the house then okay now let's do the digital get pay attention here because this is a little bit weird um, in the digital you need to name the channel to do digital APRS the channel name must match the name of the digital channel I have two digital channels that I'm going to be using and that's TAC 310 hotspot that's the name of the channel and TAC 310 GJ repeater is the name of another channel and you can see here on this that, um, well, when it goes back to, uh, okay, so he's long-winded. <laughs> anyway, the names of the channels are there because you're going to need to come back to this. Now, over here where it talks about channel slot, you have a choice of channel slot, a 1 or a 2. Remember that there are two time slots in DMR. The channel slot tells it to take the same one that the channel is taking, and that's probably your best bet. Okay. Now, you need also to specify where this message is going. Okay, in the USA, we use 310 plus three nines, nine, nine, nine. That's the APRS talk group. This is where your message is going. The call type is private call. This is not a group call. It's a private call. You're actually sort of sending a text message to these people. And you can stick 200 milliseconds down in here. Uh, for that time that'll work too. Okay, so remember this is the channel name. Now here's how this hooks together. Um, this is that channel. TAC 310 hotspot channel. Okay, this is APRS page. This is the channel page. 
Now in the channel page, I've got all my usual things. The hotspot is simplex, of course. Um, I transmit low power. It's a digital channel, the low bandwidth. I always allow myself to transmit to the hotspot and so on. It's not on any scan list. This is where you make changes. Digital. I want digital APRS, okay? And so that turns the analog mod mode off. Now, this may say, okay, if it's digital, why doesn't it come on automatically for digital? I don't know. Uh, but it's got to, you got to turn that on, okay? <clears throat> this is the push to talk mode. Otherwise, you'll only get the uh, automatic uh, sendings there. Now, digital APRS report channel, which do you want to use? One. That one corresponds to this one right here on the APRS thing. See, this is my TAC 310 hotspot. This is my TAC 310 hotspot. And it's telling to send the APRS out on the same um, channel, or the ch yeah, the same uh, time slot as the regular channel is. Okay. Now I, I checked this up here too, um, and now you're you're actually set for APRS except for one thing. Nowhere in here did you set your SSID. Nowhere in here did you tell it dash five or anything like that. It is not set in the radio. It's set on Brandmeister. You have to go to the Brandmeister network, which is Brandmeister dot dot net work not dot net dot net work okay this is one of those new top level domains that the uh, the powers that be have come up with okay brandmeister network and then here's what you see in it brand for the Anytone radio use Motorola, not Chinese. Okay, I've been specifically instructed by Anytone, by their tech guy, Motorola. Okay, language English, APRS interval, um, 90 seconds. It'll keep you from doing it more often than that. In call GPS, just turn off, turn off everything else. Now, APRS call sign. This is where you put KE0OG-3 is what I've set up. K-3. So what it's going to do when it gets a digital DMR APRS um, message from me, it's going to send it to the APRS system as KE0OG-3 three okay that's where you put in your SSID now how do you get to this this is on the self-care page of Brandmeister you need an ID obviously you've got to sign in so you can get yourself a, a login it's got this dashboard here with all kinds of information you can really geek out on the information in here and down here under services if you click on services, it'll open up three more, four more little things, one of which is self-care. It's kind of an odd phrasing, but it's self-care, okay? And that's where you put in your SSID. Now, what I did when I did the hotspot, I used a dash four ID, and then when I went through the repeater, in Grand Junction, which had, of course, entirely different frequencies from this. I used a dash three ID to differentiate the two so I could see on the map a three versus a four to make absolutely sure I was getting it through the Grand Junction repeater. Okay. Now, I just want to show you a little bit about 
the um, the face of the radio here. Um, this uh, is is just got huge copious quantities of information. Like there's that guy. It pulls up uh, where he is living, what group he is on, and so on. Uh, and his call sign and that's actually pulling it off a list in here uh, that you can download from the uh, Brand Meister Network. Um, but let's just look at some of the things since there's nothing in the user's manual that tells you what's on the page. First of all, in uh, notice that this right here is a little larger text than this right here. Okay. So we'll draw a line between those two. It says this is a digital channel, it's channel 10. Okay, this is a digital channel, it's channel 11, and it's a repeater, which this is not. Okay, this is the antenna when it's transmitting or not transmitting, it's receiving right now. Um, L is low power. So you have low, medium, high, and turbo. Now this indicator, it's actually red, okay? When I made the negative of this page, because it's a lot easier to read on the white background than it is on the dark background on a printed page, that is red. If that is red, and this is kind of an odd choice, okay? Red means GPS OK. Gray means not OK. All right. Now this is a negative so red becomes cyan. Uh, but when this is red you're OK. You've got GPS lock. You see it right, uh, right there that is red so I've got GPS lock um, and this top part is you've got two channels that you can deal with at the same time here this is bank A is active talk group 310 TAC 310 okay this is the bottom one if you press the um, the P1 key right here, it makes the bottom one bigger. So this is a real easy way to switch between a couple of channels going back and forth. This one right here gets you your menu. And by the way, you can actually set all of this, almost all of this, via the menu if you are a total glutton for punishment. Okay, the um, APRs and GPS, like you can go into uh, GPS and let's see if it, it yep it kept the uh, GPS info which is in there you can see that right there so um, there all right so what have we done we have shown and I have shown myself this is the first time I've seen it uh, that you can do APRS with, DP, uh, with DMR and it's actually fairly straightforward the only tricky part a couple tricky parts one is recognizing that down here you've got your channel and that has to match to a channel over on the APRS page. Okay, in fact you select these from drop down menus and they're the names of your channels. So that has to match which channel you want that to do that on. Okay, now the other thing that's a little bit tricky is you've got to go on to Brandmeister and add your SSID assuming that you want and SSID. Now my uh, little hotspot was using just KE0OG, still is, um, and uh, so that that should do it for automatic position reporting on the uh, Anytone D878UV. It works, it works well, um, it does everything I asked of it and uh, I also want to tell you that there's a great deal more to APRS than just sending your position uh, speed and heading reports it can do many other things beside. Uh, in channel news I've got the new technician uh, videos on a thumb drive if you want them 
for $29.99 post, $29 postpaid anywhere in the United States and um, got the extra ones for $49.99 also postpaid anywhere in the United States. Please click on like. Um, I like to see those likes. <laughs> it makes me feel good. Uh, also it tells YouTube that this is material worth watching. And please also subscribe. Uh, when you subscribe you are telling YouTube that you're putting your vote of confidence in my channel. I've also added a t-shirt to my merchandise down just below the videos there along with the coffee cup so take a look at it if you like it. If you don't, send me a suggestion, you know, I'll, I'll make something up for you uh, that we can put up there that maybe a lot of people would like that. So thanks for all of your time. I appreciate getting to know you. Don't forget the Saturday live stream at 1900 UTC which is noon Pacific Coast time okay and uh, 3 p.m. Uh, Eastern uh, Daylight Time so we'll see you then until then 73